Welcome to Global Marketing. This is chapter number one, Introduction to Global Marketing. My name is Dr. Cedric Emil Edwin, and I will be your tutor for this course. Introduction The difference between global marketing and regular marketing is in their scope of activities. The scope of activities of global marketing are outside the home country market. Product Market Growth Matrix Let's have a look at four strategies for product market growth. Market penetration. In market penetration strategy, existing products are launched in existing market. For example, discount cards or loyalty cards, which are offered by different multinationals can be an example of market penetration strategy. So for example, McDonald's loyalty cards. Product development strategy. In product development strategy, a new product is offered in an existing market. For example, McDonald's may start offering Shami Kebab burgers or Pizza Hut offers Chicken Tikka Pizza can be an example of product development strategy. Market development strategy. In market development strategy, an existing product is offered in a new market. For example, if McDonald's does its market research, and finds out that after Peshawar, Sawabi is the most affluent city in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and if it decides to open a franchise there, that would be market development strategy. Differentiation strategy In differentiation strategy, new products are offered in new markets. The example of this could be the Mac Cafe in McDonald's. Global marketing Companies that use price as a competitive weapon may use global sourcing to access cheap raw material or low-wage labor. Companies can seek to improve process efficiencies or gain economies of scale with high production volumes. Marketeers may be able to reduce monetary costs by decreasing the time and effort customers expend to learn about or seek out the product. A market is defined as people or organizations that are both able and willing to buy. A successful product or brand must be acceptable quality and consistent with buyer behavior, expectations, and preferences. If a company is able to offer a combination of superior product, distribution, or promotional benefits and lower price than competitors, it should enjoy a competitive advantage. Japanese automakers made significant gains in American market in the 1980s by creating a superior value proposition. They offered cars with higher quality and lower prices than those made by American car companies. Global marketing creates value for customers by improving benefits or reducing price. Usually it is done through improving the product quality, finding new distribution channels, creating better communications, and cutting monetary and non-monetary costs and prices. This is also referred to as value. Value refers to the benefits which a consumer gets in return of the price he pays for the product or service. Globalization Globalization is the inexorable or unstoppable integration of markets, nation-states and technologies to a degree never witnessed before in a way that is enabling individuals, corporations and nation-states to reach around the world further, faster, deeper and cheaper than ever before and in a way that is enabling the world to reach into individual, corporations and nation-states further, faster, deeper and cheaper than ever before. Global Industries an industry is global to the extent that a company's industry position in one country is interdependent with its industry position in another country. Indicators of globalization Ratio of cross-border trade to total worldwide production Ratio of cross-border investment to total capital investment and proportion of industry revenue generated by companies that compete in key world regions Competitive advantage, globalization and global industries When a company succeeds in creating more value for customers than its competitors, that company is said to enjoy competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is measured relative to rivals in an industry. A local corner shop or a grocery shop is in local industry and competes locally. A national company competes within its country's borders. Global industries compete globally, consumer electronics, apparels, automobiles, steel, pharmaceutical, furniture are such examples. Global marketing, what it is and what it isn't. 
Since countries and people are different, marketing practices that work in one country will not necessarily work in another. Consumer preferences, competitors, channels of distributions and communication may differ. Global marketers must realize the extent to which plans and programs may be extended or need adaptation. The way a company addresses this task is a reflection of its global marketing strategy or GMS. Standardization versus adaptation is the extent to which each marketing mix elements can be executed in the same or different ways in various countries. Concentration of marketing activities is the extent to which marketing mix activities are performed in one or few country locations. Coordination of marketing activities refers to the extent to which marketing mix activities are planned and executed interdependently around the world. Integration of competitive moves is the extent to which a firm's competitive marketing tactics are interdependent in different parts of the world. Standardization versus Adaptation Globalization Standardization It is developing standardized products marketed worldwide with a standardized marketing mix and it is the essence of mass marketing. Global Localization Adaptation it refers to mixing standardization and customization in a way that minimizes costs while maximizing satisfaction. It is the essence of segmentation. Think globally, act locally. Standardization versus adaptation. The design is basically the same, but the name is frequently transliterated into local languages. The Arabic label is read right to left, and the Chinese label translates delicious or happiness. McDonald's Global Marketing If we have a look at the marketing mix, we can see that there are certain aspects that are standardized, whereas there are certain things that are localized. So for example, if you look at the product, the Big Mac is a standardized product and can be seen all over the world, whereas Mac Alu Tikka is a potato burger which is specific to India only. Similarly, promotion, place and price may also include some aspects of standardization and some localization. The importance of going global. For US companies, 75% of total world market for goods and services is outside the country. Coca-Cola, for instance, earns 75% of operating income and two-thirds of profit outside of North America. For Japanese companies, 85% of world market is outside their country. 94% of market potential is outside of Germany for its companies. Management orientations. Ethnocentric orientation. Ethnocentric orientation leads to a standardized or extension approach. Foreign operations are typically viewed as being secondary or subordinate to the country in which the company is headquartered. Sometimes, valuable managerial knowledge and experience in local markets may go unnoticed. Manufacturing firms may view foreign markets as a dumping ground with little or no marketing research conducted, manufacturing modifications made, or attention paid to customers' need and wants. For example, in Nissan's early days of exporting to the US, the company shipped cars for the mild Japanese winters. Executives assumed that when the weather turned cold, Americans would put a blanket over their car seats just like Japanese would. Nissan's spokesperson said, We tried for a long time to design cars in Japan and shove them down to American consumer throats. That didn't work very well. In ethnocentric orientation, home country is considered to be superior to others. The home country sees only similarity in other countries. It assumes products and practices that succeed at home will be successful elsewhere as well. Leads to a standardized or extension approach. Polycentric orientation. Polycentric orientation assumes that each country is unique. Each subsidiary develops its own business and marketing strategies. It is often referred as multinational approach or multinational organization. It leads to localized or adaptation approach that assumes products must be adapted to local market conditions. Regionocentric orientation. A region is the relevant geographic unit. For example, NAFTA or European Union market. Some companies serve markets throughout the world but on regional basis. For example, General Motors. Geocentric orientation. Geocentric orientation assumes that the entire world is a potential market. It strives for integrated global strategies, 
they are also referred to as global or transnational companies they retain association with the headquarter company they pursue serving world market from a single country or sources globally to focus on select country markets this leads to a combination of extension and adaptation elements driving forces affecting global integration and global marketing regional agreements regional agreements can include nafta european union expansion single currency etc market needs and wants and it there are cultural universals as well as differences common elements in human nature provide the opportunity to create serve global markets that is soft drinks for example companies must recognize that product adaptation is not always necessary and that competitors may be serving global customers the information revolution which thomas friedman calls the democratization of information is one of the reason for trends to converge youtube and netflix allow people in remote areas to compare their lifestyles to others advertising overlapping national boundaries like in asia or europe and the mobility of consumers in these markets has allowed for pan regional positioning the internet is perhaps the strongest force that allows people everywhere to buy and sell transportation and communication jets allow around the world travel in less than 48 hours airlines sell each other's seats and thanks to modern technology international phone calls are inexpensive and there are many ways to communicate like fax email video conferencing wifi and broadband internet transportation costs have fallen due to specially designed ships the cost of shipping autos from japan to the us is less than the cost to ship from detroit to us coast product development cost similarly product development costs are also reducing quality global and domestic companies may spend 5% of sales on r&d but the global company has much more revenue from its markets global companies raise the bar for all the industry competitors nissan mitsubishi caterpillar have achieved world class quality world economic trends Economic growth in key developing countries represents remarkable opportunities. Slowing growth in developed countries has compelled managers to look abroad. Rapid economic growth in a country such as China has caused policymakers to open markets to outsiders. Competition can strengthen domestic companies. Domestic companies seek more governmental protection if markets are not growing. Worldwide movement of free markets, deregulation and privatization is another driving force as independent private managers take over running businesses for example steel railroad telephones airlines utilities restaurants they are likely to seek the best deals regardless of the nationality of the supplier leverage a company enjoys some type of advantage by virtue of the fact that it has experience in more than one country experience transfers means that a company can leverage its experience in any part of the world it can use management practices strategies products advertising appeals or sales or promotional ideas that have been test marketed in one country or region and can apply them in comparable markets scale economies can be gained in manufacturing and by centralizing functional activities resource utilization means that global companies can scan the entire world to identify people money and raw material that will enable it to compete most effectively in the world market rising and falling home country currency is not an issue as the world is full of currencies and a global company seeks financial resources on the best available terms it uses them where there is a best opportunity to serve a need at a profit global strategy is a design to create a winning offering on a global scale a global strategy is built on the information system that scans the world business environment to identify opportunities trends threats and resources when opportunities are identified the global company leverages its skills and focus focuses its resources to create superior value for customers and achieve competitive advantage as already discussed leverage can be through experience transfers scale economies resource utilization and global strategy restraining forces affecting global integration and global marketing management myopia and organizational culture ethnocentric companies will not expand geographically managers tend to dictate when they should create strong local teams that can rely upon the market information know it all local teams won't listen to management and all knowing managers won't listen to local experts successful global companies have learned to integrate global vision and have perspective with local market initiative and input. 
national controls. Every country tries to protect its home industries and services through tariffs and non-tariff controls. Thanks to organizations like GATT, WTO, NAFTA, European Union, and other economic agreements, tariffs have been largely removed in high-income countries. Non-tariff barriers to trade include buy local campaigns, food safety rules, and other bureaucratic obstacles. Opposition to globalization. Globophobia is the term used to describe an attitude of hostility towards trade agreements, global brands, or company policies that appear to result in hardship for some individuals or countries while benefiting others. Opponents of globalization include college or university students, NGOs, and labor unions. Some Americans believe that globalization has sent American jobs, both blue and white collar, overseas and also depressed wages at home. In developing countries, many believe that free trade agreements benefit the world's most advanced countries. An unemployed miner in Bolivia said, globalization is just another name for submission and domination. We have had to live with that for 500 years and now we want to be our own masters. This marks the end of chapter number one. Thank you.